welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Tanya and I have been documenting my fertility journey and now my pregnancy journey on YouTube. And today's video is just going to be a video talking about my fertility journey and kind of what led up to me getting pregnant and how important it is to just kind of get control over your health care, over your health while you're on a fertility journey. So today's video is sponsored by let's get checked they are an awesome company that allows you to pretty much take control of your health care let's get checked allows you to send in your own samples from the comfort of your own home you can take samples of your blood to send off to their lab so that you can stay on top of your hormones throughout your fertility journey. So because one in eight couples struggle with some form of infertility, um, Let's Get Checked has a great option for you guys because it's not always easy to run out to doctor's appointments when you're trying to work and manage leave times and all this stuff. It's not always an option to continue leaving work to get labs and stuff done. So Let's Get Checked allows you to do some of your labs from the comfort of your own home. Because I'm already pregnant, I decided to go with the kidney test. They mail you your packages very discreetly. Once you send your results in, you can review your results online within two to five days. And they do have physicians and nurses that will give you a call to go over your results with you. And if necessary, they'll go over treatment options with you, which is also a plus, <laughs> um, especially Especially if you have that extra medical support if you aren't able to make it to your doctors it's something that you can bring to your doctor's attention I like it also because you have total control of the whole process and you have that extra confidence of tracking and monitoring your health which is so so important which is what I want to get into about my own fertility journey and the struggles that I had so an example of some of the tests that they have are the progesterone test which runs about $89 they have an ovarian reserve test that is $129 and they have a female hormone test that is $139. I like how easy, private, and affordable Let's Get Checked is. If you're interested in Let's Get Checked and taking control of your health care and getting tested for things that are very important like progesterone, ovarian reserve, or just fem your female hormones or male hormones in general, I do have a coupon code which is Tanya20. The website and my coupon code Tanya20 will be linked down in the description box for you guys if you're interested in purchasing your, yourself a kit just to check on your hormones and stuff for yourself. If there's something your doctor hasn't run for you and you want to get it just checked out from the comfort of your own home for your own peace of mind. Yeah, you guys, I hope you guys take advantage of this deal and make sure you stay empowered to take control of your health care for yourself. It means so much to me because in my own fertility journey you guys I, I started I was on my fertility journey for four long years and if I had known some of the things that I know now a long time ago it could have saved me a whole lot of headache and heartbreak okay I started my fertility journey very what should I say I started my fertility journey very um I guess kind of naive and optimistic about I, and you should be optimistic but I was very naive to what was needed to conceive and what this journey entailed for someone like myself with polycystic ovarian syndrome because that's all I knew of at the time that's all I knew of being my infertility factor at the time and um, I just kind of let doctors tell me what I needed to do my health care wasn't presented to me as a partnership I just kind of let them tell me what I needed to do and I followed along with that because they're the doctors I don't know what I was doing what all of this stuff entails and so I just kind of just let them tell me what to do and I never really questioned a whole lot I just kind of went along with the flow but had I known back in 2015 when my husband and I first decided to try to conceive that 
my progesterone was such a big factor in trying to conceive and actually conceiving. I probably would have asked more questions about it. Also, to having my thyroids checked. Um, that's another hormone that needs to be monitored and all your levels need to be in certain ranges for your body to be functioning right because everything affects something and I had no idea that I had an overactive thyroid uh, when high prolactin came up nobody presented it to me like it was an issue for me and if you've been following me for a while especially over the if you've been following me over the last year you know earlier this year 2019 I found out that I had high prolactin which led my general endocrinologist endocrinologist to send me in for an MRI where I ultimately found out that I had a prolactinoma which is a small tumor at the base of your brain on your pituitary gland and I found out this has also been an issue of mine with conceiving so from finding out I had hyperthyroidism led me to finding out that I have high prolactin which led me to finding out that I have a prolactinoma where I needed to take medication to suppress the prolactin in order for my prolactin levels to go drop down where they needed to be in the range that they needed to be in for me to be able to conceive. This in turn also helped my progesterone but I also ended up taking progesterone suppositories to keep my progesterone hormones elevated where they should be because I had my progesterone levels were low which likely caused me to have my miscarriages that I had um, prior to this pregnancy because no one ever tested my progesterone ever and I just find that to be the weirdest thing that none of my doctors prior to this year had just done anything for me as far as my progesterone is concerned your low progesterone also kind of puts you at a higher chance of ha having uterine polyps which also interfere with your fertility journey and your baby implanting your embryo implanting into your uterus so i just had all of these things going on that all of these doctors that I was seeing seemed to continue to miss over and over and over again. And it wasn't until I found a good general endocrinologist that was like, let's pump the brakes on everything. We're going to run all the tests, start from ground zero because <laughs> you have, I, I pretty much came and gave her everything that I had collected from all of my doctors over the years. And once she sat down, started from zero, retested my, all of my hormones for everything you could think of under the sun. She was able to pinpoint things more specifically and then she was able to work with my reproductive endocrinologist so that everybody can, could develop a treatment plan for me to help me conceive. Partnering with my general endocrinologist was the best thing that ever happened to me. Her taking time to run these labs, giving me copies of the labs, explaining all of the labs to me, what they mean, how they can also affect my fertility, how what ranges they should be in um, to be considered normal like she explained everything to me and it was so helpful to me and I wish somebody had taken the time at the beginning of my journey my fertility journey to walk me through what I should expect what tests should be run what these test ranges should be when they are run like this this doctor is just she was like heaven sent this year year for me and she put me on cabergoline which is a medication that helped uh, suppress my brain tumor which ultimately I believe led to me conceiving my baby my rainbow baby because I started taking cabergoline March 1st of 2019 I went back six weeks later to have my prolactin levels checked just for a follow-up, see what my levels were, how much they dropped, and they dropped drastically. My levels were at like 42.8 or something like that. And when I went back six weeks later after starting cabergoline, I took a half a tablet twice a week. I think my levels dropped down to like 1.8. 
And so I started Kabergaline March 1st. I went back six weeks later in April. And then from April, my next follow-up was July 23rd, 2019. So when I went back for my follow-up on July 23rd, 2019, I had my blood work done. Um, I talked to my doctor about, you know, continuing the Kabergaline. She told me to continue it until pregnancy was achieved and, and to continue working with my reproductive endocrinologist. A lot of you guys know I ended up going through the IUI process to try to conceive in July my cycle failed and in the month of August my husband and I decided to take a break because we were doing a family trip and I didn't want to have to worry about taking fertility meds or planning fertility treatments around our vacation so I continued to take my cabergoline and that's all I all I really took. I did start metformin because I requested it based on my blood sugar levels and also because I had PCOS. My endocrinologist did tell me that my thyroid function looked perfect and also that my prolactin levels were in a range where were in a normal range as well since I had started taking the cabergoline but she didn't mind me starting metformin. I started metformin on July 26th which also happened to be cycle day one for me and then August 19th 2019 I found out I was pregnant naturally with my rainbow baby. I give all of the credit to cabergoline ultimately because it is what helped reduce my high prolactin levels. I also had started taking progesterone suppositories because I had found out that I had a progesterone deficiency. So once I found out I was pregnant, I stopped taking the cabergoline and then I started taking my progesterone suppositories and I took them for t the first 12 weeks of my pregnancy and yeah you guys that I feel that combination <laughs> is what I attribute to the success of this pregnancy and, and me achieving pregnancy after all this time like it is it was so much work I had two miscarriages I struggled day in and day out with this fertility stuff and I just wish that someone had taken the time a long time ago just to check my hormones and sit down and talk to me about the importance of each hormone and why they needed to be within certain ranges. Because I had no idea that your thyroid was something that would, was contributing to fertility. I had no idea what progesterone was because nobody had ever <laughs> mentioned it to me and it was just like I could it could have saved me so much time but you know what things happen for a reason and I'm so grateful now that I get to experience this beautiful experience of pregnancy I'm enjoying it I hope this video is helpful for someone else because I know how hard it can be to be struggling to conceive I know how hard it is to be out here looking for answers. And so that's why I like Let's Get Checked. Again, Let's Get Checked gives you that option of taking charge of your fertility and taking charge of monitoring your hormones for yourself. So when you go to the doctors, you already have everything laid out. So there's nothing's getting skipped over and you're not getting jerked around how some doctors do because they make up what they want to for your healthcare or they generalize healthcare for everybody and it should be a personalized experience. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I hope this video was also encouraging for someone to know that, you know, through all of the ups and downs of a fertility journey, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I just want you guys to feel empowered enough and, and take in charge of your own health care and to continue like fighting for what it is that you want because it is such a blessing to be able to experience pregnancy and I wish everybody can experience it. I wish you all so much baby dust. Again, if you like to take charge of your hormones and get more answers for yourself, go to let's, letsgetchecked.com and use code TANYA20 for 20% off of your first test. You guys, when you go to your doctors, make sure you are taking control of your fertility. You are in charge of your health care. It should be a partnership between you and your doctor. So I hope you guys stay encouraged. Um, I wish you guys so much luck if you're still on your own 
TTC journeys. I wish you guys so much baby does. And like I used to say, <laughs> our babies are coming. Our babies are coming. Our babies are coming. And yeah, I, I want you guys to hold on that. Repeat it for yourself. Your baby is coming. Your baby is coming. Your baby is coming. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting. Make sure you like the video if you like it. Comment down below. Let me know how your fertility journeys are going. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.